How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcagno, and I'm a first year family medicine resident working, studying here in Canada. And tonight I am on call, meaning we're going to do this video in between me getting paged and running across the hospital trying to see people, which is always a great time. Quick little tour. I got my bed, computer's over there, and there's the door. So this one should be a quick one. Lately, I've gotten a few messages from people saying that they just got accepted into medical school, which is always a great time. And it's always awesome to hear people's journeys and how they started and where they are now. And congrats to everyone that got in. I got a few messages from people asking about tips for brand new medical students and what I wish I knew before I started. And I wanted to do this video a little bit different. I wanted to share some tips that I wish I would have heard that you probably won't hear or wouldn't have heard in your regular go to school because because most schools will give you some tips when you first go like uh, you know get get a lot of sleep or make sure that you're, you're still exercising and stuff all well, these tips are very important but i want to maybe share a few things that you probably won't hear on your first orientation week of medical school uh, and if you enjoyed the video if you have questions feel free to leave any questions or comments or share your story whatever you want in the comment section below so tip number one is actually probably the most important tip and we're going to get it out of the way now before we get into some of the more practical stuff but this, I need to say this right now because you having just got into medical school, you did it. And, and I know this is something that you've put so much hard work into and all the sleepless nights and all the studying and all the preparing for interviews and these exams, the MCAT. And it's all thanks to your own hard work. You got yourself to the point where you are now. And now that you're here in medical school, I need you to remember that there is nothing that you can't do. If you have a goal, if you want to be a neurosurgeon, you want to be a cardiovascular surgeon, you want to be uh, the best internist there is or the best family doctor in your community, you can do it. You can 100% do it. And I don't think that it matters what the stats say. You need to go into this with that mindset, with that dedication that there is nothing that's outside your reach. You just prove that to yourself. So the most important thing now is to define your goals, to understand as soon as possible exactly what it is that you want to do and write that goal down and then make it happen for yourself. And don't let anyone tell you, don't let anyone define how much work you're willing to do to achieve that end goal. You know yourself best, pay attention to your own science of how you're feeling, but if there's something you want to do, come up with that plan and make it happen. And I've seen it with myself, with my friends, Sometimes people are going to think you're crazy, the amount of work that it takes to get to you where you want to go, but it's worth it. And I've seen it pay off for myself and my friends time and time again, and you can do it. And don't forget that. Tip number two, and now for the more practical stuff, is that it is in your best interest as a new medical student to not fall behind at all costs, basically. And, and the reason why is because medical school is hard enough. And when you fall behind, the things just start stacking at a level that you've probably never seen before. And I'm probably speaking for myself here, but there was definitely a step up in difficulty and workload. And as you start to fall behind, these things don't stop. There is no time to kind of recover and make up that ground. There's always something just on the other side of that that thing that you're studying for that test coming up and that's why I would recommend that starting from the get-go once you take your first week to get to know everyone and uh, have all the fun team building activities and, and looks around the campus and everything like that like, like take that first week and enjoy being a med student and getting your white coat and your knapsack and everything else but then you got to come up with a study plan and your study plan needs to be consistent. It doesn't need to be a lot every single night, but it just needs to be consistent enough so that you never fall behind. My favorite thing that I recommend to everyone, just from the start, grab one of your friends, two of your friends that you just met, and invest in some form of video lecture series, whether it's Osmosis or Beyond the Boards or Merck Manual, it doesn't matter, just, just find, Pathoma is another good one, find some company that's offering a video lecture series. And I would say that in addition to your regular reading material, whatever is assigned to you by your program, just make sure that you're also supplementing that with some sort of video lecture series. It's very easy, a lot of times the diagrams to make everything uh, easy for you to follow along. And that sense, if you don't fall behind, you're never playing catch up and you're always going to be on top of everything and you're never going to feel that next level stress and difficulty that many people talk about when medical school. But I find that they only talk about that when they're falling behind. This is easier said than done, trust me, but it's something that I really only got a handle on starting in, I would say, maybe the second year. 
Um, so you're best off getting that, that situated from the very beginning. And quick bonus tip building off of that, you just do Anki. You need to do Anki if you really want to just push ahead of everyone else and always be up to date on whatever organ system you're, you're working with and it helps you out for the boards afterwards. Onking. Onking is the only deck that you should be doing. Uh, I'll try and put a link in the description. I believe for breakdowns to Anki, if you're new to Anki, Rachel Southerd has a good video on it. Um, and also there, there was another guy, I think, too, that has like the most viewed video on YouTube for Anki. So I won't talk about that now. Do Anki and Onking, especially for the USMLEs and anyone writing those. Okay, tip number three. I think we're on three um, is the most difficult part of medical school in my opinion is figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life and it sounds difficult but it's it's actually difficult and I think many of us will jump around from a few different things throughout medical school but what this means is that if you're in a three-year program you're doing the accelerator program you have less time to figure this all out for yourself if you're in a four-year program it's still not really that much time so I'll say that the importance in, in this tip is to start doing clinical electives, start shadowing, start getting some experience um, as soon as you can. It doesn't have to be that first week of school, it doesn't even have to be the first month, but when they open, I would say that, so what I did is I started off in surgery first because I really wanted to know if surgery was gonna be for me or not and uh, ended up making that decision pretty early on. And I think that that's a good way to split it up. Do you want surgery or do you not want surgery? And the next tip is, do you want to work in the hospital all the time or do you want to do clinic-based medicine? So then you might want to do some stuff in eMERGE and shadowing maybe cardiology or nephrology or any of the internal medicine specialists and pay attention to your own interests. Look for where you want to spend your time. Like where do you, even though it's a job and I've talked about that before, medicine is a job. In what environment do you think you will find the most joy and the most um, fulfillment and, and working for the rest of your life or however long you, you intend on staying in medicine for and break it down algorithmically once you rule something else start doing some other things and hopefully in the very least you'll want some sort of consensus as to are you a generalist are you a specialist are you thinking surgery hopefully by the end of the second year it makes things a lot easier in terms of planning your electives and really narrowing down where you're going to be spending uh, a lot of the the second half of medical school in terms of clerkship and getting those letters and making those connections and everything like that and then finally my last unconventional tip because i do want to keep this video relatively short you're going to hear some of the most amazing and important tips when you actually go to orientation there's going to be some great lectures to fill you in on any on everything but one of the things that you won't hear maybe um, I probably didn't hear is that no matter what happens, no matter what specialty you end up in, uh, you're going to be okay. You, as, as long as you make it through the program and you dedicate yourself, it doesn't matter if you match GI, you match nephrology, you match family medicine, you match surgery, find something that you're passionate about. And then even if you don't end up in that thing, find something else and then become passionate about that. I, I, I really have seen for myself that it's all about making your own luck. And no matter where you end up, you can and will be successful in it if you take that mentality. And I think building off of that, a lot of people like to talk about medical school as being different and removed from a regular job and a regular interview and environmental process, but it's, it's not true in the sense that make those connections reach out to mentors, do some research with someone, volunteer in certain initiatives, but you need to get people to like you. You need to get mentors to show you the way that their specialty is and how things actually work and learn from the people that are doing these things. And then when you find someone that you've identified as not being a good mentor, it's probably not in your best interest to spend too much time in that particular area. You might want to look somewhere else because there's so much to see, so much to do, and so many different people to work with in medicine that if you find someone or a place that is not welcoming, a place that you really don't want to spend the rest of your life, um, there's better options out there for you. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that is a particular bad option. It just might not be for you, and that's okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I have my own agenda when it comes to this stuff. I've seen it enough times now in the, the medical education system to know that I feel like in many cases, the this education system itself is failing students. Um, there are many cases where we're having debates in schools about should med students wear white coats because it's a symbol of paternalistic medicine and this, that, and the other social issue. And I think these are important concepts to have, 
but not at the expense of our medical students. These are the future leaders that we're supposed to be training in medicine, and I'm all about empowering them to feel as proud about their future profession as is possible. There should never be a time in all of your medical school training where you let someone else bring you down and regret your decision to be in medicine. And I hear that from students these days, and I think it's, I think it's insane. The amount of dedication that it took you to get to where you are now should be commended. And uh, you know, in that regard, congratulations to everyone. Uh, I hope to see you in the hospital one day. Uh, I really hope you enjoy your time in medical school. It will not be easy. It will not be easy. It'll be fun. There will be many times where you'll look back on it and you'll really appreciate the connections you made and the things you learned. The job now is awesome. Um, being on the other side and being able to do this right now. But uh, just make it through. Take care of yourselves. Use these tips. We'll see you all on the next one. Everyone take care and good luck.